Hello, everybody. Welcome to our college visit series. We have Randolph Macon College here with us today, so we're very excited about that. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to their wonderful admissions representative, Miss Natalie Lug, and she's going to be telling us all about their wonderful programs over there and any admissions information that you need to know. Awesome. Thank you so much, April. I really appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. As April mentioned, I am Natalie Lug. I am the admission counselor that covers Hanover County High School. So local, and I love it, just a little bit away from Randolph-Macon College here in Ashland. Um, for those of you who are on today, I have a link for students to register and check in with us that I will send in the chat right now. If you could click on that link and fill it out, it will just say that you have attended this Zoom session with us. And um, I will also be able to follow up after and send you a quick thank you note, um, whether it be a fun postcard or an email, I haven't decided yet, but that is to come. But welcome everybody. I am gonna dive right on in um, with a little bit more of general information. And what we like to focus on with this little word cloud is something that we call our buzzword. So as some of you might already know, our mascot is the yellow jacket. So we do focus heavily on protecting the hive, which means protecting our students, our alumni, um, obviously defending in terms of competing against other schools with our varsity athletics teams. And um, we have 23 varsity athletics teams, as you can see here um, at that number below on your screen. But overall campus is around 1600 students. Our average class size sits at about 16 and we do have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So what that basically means is our classes are very much discussion-based. You'll have 10 to 15 percent of your grade focused on participation and that really speaks to one of the skill sets that we plan on helping you strengthen in your four years here and that revolves around communication but also learning to build and strengthen your own voice and your own opinion. So more at the oral communication side of things to make sure that you're preparing on learning how to network, network with alumni, with those in the career path that you want to go down, all different opportunities to really make sure that you're fully prepared with a variety of different skill sets as you walk across that graduation stage. Now, we do have a 95% placement rate for our graduates. So we wanna make sure that you're here for those four years, you're taking advantage of all the opportunities that we have here, such as the research opportunities um, with our Shapiro Undergraduate Research Foundation, also known as a SURF program. So for those of you who are thinking about doing research at the college level, not just in the sciences, it is also also available for those who are looking at humanities majors uh, or social sciences majors. So that could be history, political science, women's gender and sexuality studies, uh, criminology, cybersecurity. Our SURF program allows for nine weeks of paid research to be completed across campus. And that would be about a $3,500 stipend where you could take the summer after your freshman year, your sophomore year, your junior year, or even your senior year to do research across campus as well in a particular area that you have an interest in, whether it's for your major, your minor, what have you. Um, but I will say with students who are figuring out what they want to major in, you do have till second semester of your sophomore year to officially declare. So it is pretty common for students to come in undecided. Our other most popular majors, besides undecided, if you want to throw that in that category, would actually be our business and management program, as well as communications, or our top two most popular majors. But you'll also see biology and chemistry thrown in there. Um, as well as that cybersecurity actually in criminology that I mentioned earlier. But um, like I said, with these buzzwords, there are so many different things that define us um, and tell, uh, tell you a little bit about, about who we are. But I also want to dive into the word COTU on your screen, C-O-T-U. And what that represents is us being in the center of the universe. Um, with that, we really pride ourselves on being kind of in the middle of everywhere, two hours from the ocean to the east, two hours from the mountains to the west, but also very central to some of the bigger cities where you might go and do an internship with, connect with an alum app, or maybe that's where your first entry level job will be or graduate school opportunities. So it could be going Raleigh to Raleigh down south, or maybe up north to Washington, D.C., we want to make sure that you're taking advantage of all the different opportunities that we have, yes, on campus, but also off of campus. So with that, it might be you hopping on the Amtrak 
and jumping over to Washington, D.C., whether it's to join the whole campus for the Cherry Blossom Festival. Um, our president actually has the whole day reserved for um, everybody getting a free ticket, ticket to jump on the Amtrak to celebrate in the Cherry Blossom Festival up in Washington, D.C. So that would be a day where you get to take a break from classes and join the whole Yellow Jacket family to check out the area up there. Um, but we also want to make sure that you're networking and communicating and collaborating with all different types of people across the Randolph-Macon community. So it will be connecting with those alums, with those career folks who are in the areas that you want to go down and explore to really see if that's your cup of tea once you've graduated. So with that, that will be introduced to you through for the start, our EDGE career program, um, that allows for different opportunities for those internships or dusting up your resume, learning how to write a cover letter, learning how to interview for a graduate school opportunity or for that off-campus study abroad program. We wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of all of those pieces as well so that you are strengthening your career pathway, whatever that may be. Now, the Washington Initiative on this page is also something that we pride ourselves in, and that is making sure, again, that you're taking advantage of all that the Washington, D.C. area can offer. So that, again, is connecting and making sure that you're aware of all of the resources that we can provide you, whether it's additional funding to get up there and taking the Amtrak to maybe getting an internship um, completed or connecting with different alumni or other um, offices, whether it's a law office, if you're thinking more of the pre-law track or getting in touch with someone in the government on uh, the alumni side of things to get your foot in the door that way. We want to make sure that you're continuing to take advantage of these options um, and that you're aware of them, that we do have that funding available to our students um, who might not be able to jump on the Amtrak every single day um, because of whatever family situation or financial situation, um, or maybe their classes don't allow it, maybe they don't have time. So getting that virtual opportunity set up for those students as well. Um, so that's one big piece too, is making sure that you know that um, we are the center of the universe go to, as I mentioned earlier, but what about your experience inside of the classroom? So I do wanna bring up the academic side of things. I know I mentioned earlier that classes are going to be a little bit more discussion-based and a little bit smaller at that too. So the professors are going to know your name, um, they have the highest degree in their field. That's what the 100% graduate assistant free bubble means is that our professors have the, uh, their PhD in all of the academic areas that they are teaching. It's never a teaching assistant that's coming in and teaching a lab or teaching a class or grading your papers. That is all done through our professors um, and making sure that they're getting to know you a little bit better and also providing you the different support systems in place so that you can continue to be successful in the academic fields that you are studying. I know I touched on a little bit of research uh, with our SURF program, that nine week opportunity where you can get paid to do research, um, but you can start doing research your freshman year if that's something that you're super invested in. I know I mentioned earlier that a lot of our students do double major or at the very least have a major and minor. Um, I went to a similar liberal arts institution and I actually was able to major in economics and minor in history and then continue also um, with varsity swimming too as my sport. So I was a student athlete at that. Um, we have a variety of our students, I'd say about 33% of our students on campus who are varsity athletes um, and they are balancing, you know, that classroom side as well as that comp competition side competing in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. So just some other things to think about, to think about considering getting involved in if that's also something that you want to spend your time doing. Um, my favorite part about camps actually though is sending students off of campus. So I mentioned internships earlier as well as study abroad and as you can see here we do have a variety of our students who take advantage of these opportunities, whether it's for a full semester or during our one part of our 414 academic calendar. That one means January term, which is the full month of January where you can take one class and focus just on that one class and it will go towards your graduation requirements. I know some students will take a class that they might be a little bit weaker in that might not be their strong suit and they know that it might be easier to focus on that one class at that time in those four weeks as opposed to balancing it with three other classes. So that could be one thing that you want to participate in. Maybe you want to go and study abroad here. In this picture right here in the center, um, this student is actually in England and she took an art history and music course over in England for four weeks. Um, 
So that's another option. And what you could do, what I call a mini study abroad trip to the Greek islands, to Italy, to England, to Ireland, um, to New Zealand, to Thailand, to South America or Central America. The world is your oyster in that regard with the off-campus immersive opportunities to a completely different country. Now, the last opportunity in January term is an internship. And this will help open doors to figure out what you really want to do with your career. And here, this student is part of our nursing school, actually. Um, he started the Nursing Honor Society with our students on campus, um, but he has done an internship locally here in the Richmond area. So maybe checking out different hospitals, different other opportunities across the Richmond um, metro area, or going up to the DC area, uh, down to Raleigh, like I mentioned earlier, or maybe you wanna get outside of the East Coast. That's also another option, is taking it somewhere completely different um, that's outside of these particular close tight-knit states. So you could go to Texas, maybe you want to go to California, Oregon, Washington. Um, again, the world, but also the nation is your oyster and that opportunity. I do want to point out the student under the intensive study photo. Um, she is a mathematics major and she is president of our Math Honor Society here on campus who participated in an intensive study program in a particular math course as well. So she was one who was a little bit stronger in the math areas, so she focused more on that side of things as opposed to focusing on an intensive study course um, that might be more of a weaker subject. So a lot of options to play around with it with what you want to do, but every single student will come in and participate in a January term and they have these three different options to participate in. Um, I do want to mention that tuition is covered with these January terms. The only piece that might not be covered will be the flights to and from a study abroad program, but we do have scholarships and research grants as well as other additional grants to help offset that cost as well. So just something to keep in mind. Um, but why are you all looking at college? Why do you want to go to college? And a lot of that will be because you want to figure out what is next in your life. So that could be, yes, maybe a graduate school opportunity to go get, go get your own master's or your PhD after you get your undergraduate degree. But it could also mean starting the entry level program, the entry level job to figure out what your career path will look like. So for here at Randolph-Macon, we have a variety of support systems in place, whether it's an upperclassman mentor that will be with you your whole freshman year, your academic advisor who is paired with you, um, not, not even after you've uh, chosen a major, it will actually be the first few days of class that you'll be paired with an academic advisor until you officially declare that major, and then you might pivot to a new academic advisor. But we also have our EDGE Career Center, and this, in a way, is your application to your life after Randolph-Macon. That's kind of the tag, the phrase that we've termed with it. But the EDGE Career Center will allow different opportunities to find that perfect internship or that off-campus study opportunity, but also to make sure that you're getting the support systems across campus to build your resume that much further, to network with professors, with other staff members across campus. One big piece that we also like to mention is that every single sophomore that comes through these doors will also participate in a boot camp that will be a full weekend, either in the month of October or February. And that will allow for opening doors to learning what it means to network. What does it mean to sit at a fancy dinner and hold, have all these different types of utensils to choose from, but also what does it mean to hold a conversation at a fancy dinner? How do you interview and what are you doing well in the interview process? What are you doing well in the networking process? So alumni will come back for this boot camp. Staff and faculty will volunteer for this boot camp to help prep you to dive that much deeper into the career world. So that's something that you'll be checking off your list to prepare you for that career after Randolph Macon as well. And that starts as early as sophomore year, but also even earlier with freshman year, with getting that support system in place with that advisor to guide you on the career path, but also that academic pathway as well. Um, another piece that I know I mentioned a little bit was the networking piece. Um, our alumni are not only number three in the nation, but also, sorry, number three in Virginia and number 22 in the nation. But what that means in terms of the networking piece is they're also that much more likely to give back to Randolph-Macon. So all the different buildings that you might see here on campus, if you come visit, all the different opportunities, whether it's research grants, like the SURF program I mentioned earlier, that all comes from alumni funding. So our alumni want to make sure that you are all just as prepared as they were, if not even more so, to snag the opportunities that we have available and that you're also being funded for those opportunities, but that you're that much more successful when you step out into that real world. So just another piece to think about.
consider as you look at all the different colleges that you're checking out. Um, now, what about life outside of the classroom? And as I'm sure you've guessed it, you're not going to be in the classroom as much as you are in high school. So what does that look like? Our students, I will say, are incredibly involved. Um, I would say they have a plate and they are piling high with as many things as they can add to it, sometimes maybe to an overflowing point. But a big part of that is really learning about themselves and what they really want to invest their time in. So a big piece of that will actually be with community service and giving back not only to the Randolph-Macon College community, but also to the Ashland community. That's a big part and a big piece that we pride ourselves in is making sure that we're also looking out for each other and others across the community to make sure that we are leaving the world and making the world a better place. Um, so with that, it really is asking yourself, what else do you want to get involved in at the collegiate level? What all are you involved in in high school? And is that something that you want to continue on doing at the collegiate level? Or maybe you want to try something new. Every single college and university has a variety of clubs or organizations available to you. We have an activity fair that's available to our students, but we also have a career fair available to our students, multiple career fairs. So with the Edge Career Center that I talked about a few slides back, um, they'll have a few different career fairs that happen during the weekday so that you can see what other options are available to you, not just on campus, but also off campus with where you see yourself after you walk across that graduation stage. So the options are endless. There are a lot of things available to you. So just another thing to keep in mind. I know with our fraternities and sororities, I do want to mention campus has about 35% of its population involved in fraternities and sororities. And that's also a big part of that community service hours and the amount of money that we've raised. Um, to give back to the communities that there's a lot of philanthropy that will happen with our fraternities and sororities and giving back and being a part of an organization that they want to raise funds for. So another thing to think about too, um, in terms of involvement and what else you can do across campus. Um, now a little bit more on the admission side. I'm not sure how many of you are seniors, but even for sophomores and juniors, this is just something important to make note of. Um, it is free to apply to Randolph-Macon. We are on the common application, but we also have our own application. It doesn't matter which one you choose to apply to. Um, they both have the same amount of weight. I would say if you're applying to a lot of different schools, I would choose the common application because a lot of schools do fall under that particular um, application piece. But then if it's just one or two schools you're checking out, then that's when I would encourage you to check out our very own Randolph making application, both of which can be found on our website. But what do we look for when reviewing your applications, which actually we're going to be starting to read here in a few weeks? We have what is called a holistic review process and that we're looking at every single part of your application. So for us, it's not just about the grades. Yes, average GPA sits around a 3.7. Average SAT sits between 1,100 and 1,200, ACT between a 22 and a 25, but we're test optional and have been for the past two years now, and we're going to continue with that. So if your scores don't represent you well with ACT or SAT, you do not have to submit them, and it will not affect your admissibility nor your opportunity to receive a merit scholarship. So another thing to make note of. Um, we look at your extracurriculars. We look at how well written your essay is. Does it tell us a little bit more about yourself than just looking at the transcript and the grades that you've taken or the classes that you've taken, pardon me. Um, but with those transcripts, we do check out what types of classes you have signed up for, whether it's honors, whether it's AP, IB. Does your high school offer those opportunities? Um, we only require one letter of recommendation, but I'd say a good happy average is three letters, all from a variety of different people. Another thing that is optional is also setting up an interview with your admission counselor, um, whether that be me or if you come to campus and for some reason I'm not here meeting with another one of my colleagues here in person, um, just to have a conversation of what other opportunities are available to you here at Randolph-Macon. Um, it's very much a two-way street with that conversation of do we see yourself fitting in well at Randolph-Macon, but also vice versa? Do you see yourself fitting in well here? And um, we want to make sure that when you get here, that it is a great fit and that you're taking advantage of all the options, opportunities that are available to you here so that you can be that, that much more successful in the career world. Um, we do have a few application deadlines to choose from. Early decision is that binding contract saying no matter what, I love Randolph-Macon and if I get in, I'm definitely coming here. That's fantastic if you know that, but at age 18, I know you also have a lot of other opportunities. So that's why we also offer early action and regular decision. You can see the deadlines here on your screen as well as the um, 
enrollment deposit deadline for early decision and early action and regular decision, but then also the notification deadline. Um, so it's about a month, a month and a half um, to receive a decision from us, which will include your decision letter and your merit scholarship letter. Um, on the financial aid side of things, if you can submit your FAFSA, which opens up October 1st, just a few days ago, and we can get all the information from you, we'll also be as quick as we can and say two to three weeks after you receive your official decision from us that you'll receive your financial aid letter as well. Um, on the nursing side of things, if those of you are interested in nursing, just know that the application is due November 15th and the regular decision deadline is February 1st. So you must have a minimum of a 3.25 GPA to be considered. So just another thing to keep in the back of your head if you're thinking about going to nursing, you just apply via the common application and make sure that you mark that you are interested in applying to the nursing program. And our committee will get back to you about those particular requirements. And usually it's about one or two 250 word essays that revolve around your interest in the nursing realm. Now the affordability piece, one of the number one things about making a college decision will come down to cost. So I want to reassure you that when you come to Randolph-Macon, it will be an investment and it will be an investment that is worth your while. Like I said, we have a 95% placement rate after college. We wanna make sure that you're in and out in those four years, but that you are set up after graduation, after you walk across that stage. So whether it be that graduate school opportunity or that entry level job, we want to make sure that you are fully set. So to add on to that, not only do we have a commitment to you with the merit scholarship piece, but we also want to let you know that we have assistant grants for those who live in the state of Virginia, as well as out of state grants for those who might be outside of Virginia. And that will be an additional $3,000 for those who apply to financial aid and submit their FAFSA we will award them an additional $1,000 just for filling out the application. We know how tedious it can be, so we figured it'd be a nice treat to get that additional $1,000 added on there as well. But here is where you can see the breakdown of the merit scholarships that we offer our students um, once you receive your merit scholarship, as well as the other pieces, whether it's the grants, the financial aid, incentive amount, um, just know that that cost comes down to almost the exact same as a state school here within the state of Virginia. Um, but just keep in mind that with the holistic review process, um, every single merit scholarship that you could receive here, whether it's the deans, the trustees, the presidential, there are so many different factors that come into play in receiving one of these awards. If you are awarded the trustees or the presidential award, you will have the opportunity to interview to receive an additional merit scholarship amount. Um, if it's a trustees award, it'll be around $2,500. And if it's a presidential award, it will be minimum $2,500, maximum a full tuition scholarship as well. And we award four of those full, tu full tuition scholarships every single year. So with that being said, does anyone have any specific questions for me that I can help answer at the moment? Um, as I mentioned, there is a form that you can fill out if you are on here with me right now. I will put it back in here. Um, that will just let me know that you've shown a little bit of interest in us and that I can reach out to you um, and connect at any time as well. Um, I do also want to mention that we are hosting an event on October 19th. That's a Tuesday evening. Um, we will be having a student panel available to all of you all within the Hanover County area. And then we also will have a financial aid session that will be occurring as well with our director of financial aid, Julie Hickman McCoy. Um, she will be touching base with parents, um, for those of the parents that are interested in learning a little bit more about the financial aid process. So I'm going to make sure that I snag that um, registration form and get that out to you guys um, right now. So let me pull that really quick. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to type it in the chat and I am happy to um, answer them. But thank you so much for having me, by the way. I really appreciate you all and your attentiveness this afternoon the January term. Is that yeah. something that students do once while they're at Randolph-Macon or do they do it every January? How does that work? They will do it every January actually. So, and they can mix it up with what they wanna do. I feel like most will end up doing at least one intensive study on campus. And then those who are more focusing on say the pre-med track, the nursing track and what have you, they'll focus more on the research piece of it with internships. Um, but a lot will opt into doing that, that um, study abroad option too, especially for those athletes that don't have to train in the month of January and they don't want to take a full semester abroad.
that is a really cool option for them to participate in just four weeks of dipping their toes in a completely different culture. So great question. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's built into tuition yeah. and they have the opportunity every year. I didn't realize that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And they switch up where, where the um, different countries that they'll head out to. And it's usually like 15 to 20 different programs that students can choose from. So. Wow. Yeah. That's great to take advantage of. Yeah. All right. Well, students, if you have any other questions, I'll make sure to include Ms. Lug's contact information and you guys re please reach out to her. If you have any questions about anything, uh, look out for that information too about the college night that they're going to be having. Um, and make sure you attend that too, if you're interested. Thank you so much, everybody.